Okay, so everything seems to be in order and we're just about to start this call now. Um, firstly, this is the uh, uh, Internet, Freedom Fe um, uh, Internet Freedom Foundation's first quarterly call and I'm understandably a little nervous because this is where we give a report to our members on what have we been up to over the last quarter, how have we, uh, we've been utilizing the funds, the general contributions which have been made by so many people uh, to Internet Freedom Foundation over the past um, few months. And um, we sent out an email with a type form in which we asked our members what they wanted us to cover through this call. And we have structured this uh, completely as per their wishes and their availability. This is a learning process for us. And as we go forward, we hope to make this much more meaningful, not only explain our work, but share ownership of it to get to know what members would ideally like us to do uh, in the coming months as well. How can we prioritize our work and we can possibly even do things in a much better way. So um, we have a quick presentation to make after which we'll open it up for comments and uh, I'm hoping that more members join in. This call is being recorded. It will be shared and if there are any privacy concerns, uh, you can change your name even now and uh, you can either participate one on one, um, have an interaction with us through a webcam or you can type in your query much more directly into the chat box also. So just to start this out, uh, this call is uh, centered around two big chunks. The first one is on program. What have we been actually up to in terms of uh, our work? And the second is with regard to our organizational development. How is IFF coming along? What have been the challenges along the way? And the big chunk here is program because most of our members actually wanted to discuss what we have been up to. They want a better sense about it. So uh, prior to getting into what we are doing on specific issues, a uh, member specifically also raised a query that um, what is IFF's long-term vision? Where do you see your space? And what are you hoping to achieve in a much more clearer way? So what's clearly coming across right now in India, especially after the last elections, is that there is an increased amount of focus in government policy by all institutions to utilize technology as a core element of governance. Now, this is also presenting challenges for civil liberties, for individual rights under the Constitution of India. And as technology becomes very well integrated in our lives, we have a great opportunity to actually make sure that not only technology is rights respecting, it can even advance uh, fundamental rights. This is what we call digital rights. And our top priorities on the basis of this are in four big areas. That's net neutrality, privacy, free expression, and innovation. And I'll be running through independent program interventions we have done, specific elements of work we have done in all these four areas in the next few slides. All of our work is based of strategy, of courage, and we do it with emotion. So we are not a research organization. We are an advocacy organization. We are here to make sure that the internet in India, but much more broadly, technology itself, serves the promises for which our country actually exists. And that is to ensure justice, equality, liberty, and fraternity for all of us. So the first big thing which is on everyone's mind, and we just advance that up, and that also reflects the large amount of work we are doing, is on privacy. And privacy is something which is in the news all the time from data breaches, to new government programs such as CCTVs or facial recognition. And this has been something which has been of quite a lot of concern. At the same point of time, we see all these news stories about uh, data localization, about uh, surveillance powers, and IFF has taken a lead on a lot of these um, issues. Um, firstly, we have um, approached courts and we do this quite well. We filed a massive surveillance challenge in which we said that the 
protections which are available for telephone tapping are very uh, are very deficient when they are applied to digital surveillance because the kind of personal information which is gathered by not only telecom companies but online social media uh, conglomerates and online platforms is massive right so um, there needs to be better safeguards there needs to be judicial oversight and we filed this case in the supreme court in a bunch of other cases we have also much more recently intervened in the madras high court and it's been looking at linking aadhar with our social media to which we are objecting saying that it would just increase the amount of profiling for people but much more uh, but much more focused uh, in our intervention has been a response to the tamil nadu state government this is something we'll go over in our individual blog post and the next hearing is this week itself in fact on wednesday for which i happen to be flying to chennai and uh, it's not only the courts so our larger strategy is to engage with all government institutions to promote a rights respecting framework for data protection for which we launched the seva privacy campaign right and in that we came up with a solution in which we had a draft law which was called the privacy code and we've updated it it's been filed in parliament as a private members bill and we expect it to again come up on uh, in this session itself and uh, we'll give much more information as we go forward on this um, and lastly but not the least the government seems to be on a and all governments not the central government but all governments seem to be on a spree towards you know Uh, gathering much more information about us uh, so this includes cctv spatial recognition we've sent notices on them we've also filed a bunch of rtis on surveillance this is just because there's a lot of concern which is coming through there's a lack of information and all these programs to a large uh, degree don't have adequate public information put out why are they being done what are the safeguards in place and what will make sure that there are feasibility studies to protection mechanisms devised in it a larger objective is to ensure that there are modern institutions which make sure that informational privacy is respected in india the second big area we are working on is free speech a lot of people are coming online but a lot of people are also going to jail apps are getting banned and people have even been jailed for playing pubg which was a online multiplayer game so we went to the gujarat high court on this and even though our pil got rejected this did result in some kind of public advocacy win in which the notifications by the gujarat police and these were in five different districts were not repeated and we are keeping a watch out because these notifications which led to the arrest of at least 21 young adults who were usually college students happened during ex- the examination period so i think the real test will be there next year but much more broadly this entire approach of banning apps is something we've been engaging even with the government on tiktok and other apps because yes there is a lot of concern that these apps do interact and do influence choices and behaviors but we believe that in this the any kind of concerns which are coming through should be addressed in a rights respecting framework and bans quite clearly are not the answer and one of the other solutions we came up with is the proactive creation of a, a forward looking policy and strategy uh, for political parties and this was done prior to the elections in which we released a digital rights manifesto and uh, the congress party as well as the cpim actually took elements of that and put it in their manifestos we don't know if it was our manifesto though we are quite sure that conversation around this started a little early because we contributed to it and after the elections when it was uh, when we had a clear mandate in favor of the nda government we wrote to the government with a copy of this a uh, digital rights charter and manifesto and we are making sure that in all our interventions and asks there is a non partisan ask that all parties political parties all formations all governments at the central and the state level actually uh, integrate and buy into this message uh, finally a little earlier on in the year we went to the supreme court because so many people were going to jail under section 66a and section 66a was ruled unconstitutional by the supreme court 
uh, in 2015, it's one of the best judgments on internet freedom. It's called Shreya Single versus Union of India. And um, we basically, through our intervention, which was filed by the People's Union for Civil Liberties, um, got a copy of this judgment delivered to all the police stations as well as the district courts where these kind of cases are first registered and brought out. So it's had some impact. We've seen 66 say, cases drop and we're constantly monitoring on this. So we are making sure in our own small way that people don't go to jail for um, using the internet, for playing a game and for, uh, for, for sharing a video. Uh, finally, on net neutrality and innovation, we relaunched Save the Internet because here's the thing, even though a lot of people think that we once saved the internet and uh, uh, we got the net neutrality protections, there's no enforcement mechanism. And this has resulted in violations which include websites being blocked, which is a net neutrality violation because ISPs shouldn't block websites unless there's a government order or, for instance, the BSNL. Uh, which serves so many internet pro, uh, uh, users across India, um, has been injecting uh, uh, injecting advertisements and interfering with the uh, uh, user experience whenever a person visits a non-HTTP website. And we've made interventions here. It's our hope that enforcement uh, mechanism comes through this. Again, on app bans, we have been writing to the government. We've been working with them. We're making sure this doesn't uh, occur. Our election work is something which is very interesting and this is something I do want to talk about. So we coordinated with a group of NGOs which included the Association for Democratic Reforms, India's preeminent NGO on, um, uh, on, um, on electoral reforms, but also a group of civil servants which included two former chief election commissioners urging the election commission to take steps to safeguard um, elections uh, from threats of voter profiling and misinformation campaigns. We'll be carrying forward some elements of this work uh, as we step towards the state assembly elections in Maharashtra and the other states as well. This is something we are looking to develop in an advocacy mode given that there's a lot which needs to be done to ensure the integrity of the election process from the side of speech, funding, and uh, it's just a given that parties will continue using the internet much more widely for their campaigning, and uh, people will continue getting connected to the internet and using it actually to consume this kind of content. So there needs to be a better framework in place. There needs to be better enforcement. We've also been working on a research study on how the model code of conduct, especially with regard to online platforms, actually work in the general elections. And this is something which may see the light of day in the next few months. Uh, ideally, I would hope uh, towards September. Now, finally, uh, IFF has grown. Now, um, you can see all of us smiling and grinning because uh, uh, we've had some impact and Uh, we, uh, we, uh, 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 we've had some impact and uh, we've uh, uh, and we've grown as a team so that uh, you can just see that in the picture so uh, I'm overseeing the role of executive director I'm quite enjoying it and uh, Joanne is le leading us on policy and organizational development Dave Datta has just joined uh, last month she's building out the litigation practice uh, that's Dharam, Dharampal Kumar sir and he shepherds the group. He's our office manager. And behind him are, are two long-term interns, Rishabh and Jatin. And with regard to members and finances, we are growing. Our membership program launched in February. And uh, uh, our donations also are growing. Uh, we've received about 12 lakhs from organizational donors. And this has been with complete transparency into our corpus. And there's been growth, which has been modest. We need more. We'll be putting out our, our figures quite soon with a very uh, a clear ask and also looking at ways at fundraising so we can hire more staff. And what are the core challenges we ourselves face? And this is my last slide before we open it up to members is that there's a lack of institutional independence, which is growing in India. We sense it. So um, it basically means that 
there's political interference in different parts of institutions such as courts, such as uh, regulatory bodies, which may be an issue of concern. A lot of people are commenting on it. So it may decrease the impact of our interventions. Uh, IFF internally also lacks core campaigning strength at present. And we need, do need to build it out. We have not run a big type of campaign in terms of using social media as much as we put out individual blog posts more often. And finally, our uh, resources are modest, which are impairing our ability to scale up and bring in the kind of staff which is needed for campaigning and member management and getting a better buy-in from public on the kind of work we are doing, which does seem sometimes to be too legal and policy oriented. So with that, let's hear it from the members. And we'll follow order of rotation. And this is expected on a large member turnout. But let's let's get into some conversation here. And um, the first, we were thinking we'll do this in three rounds. The first one will be on our existing work. The second will be on staffing and finance. And third will be on future plans. What can IFF do better? In fact, uh, we can also roll this all into one. So uh, let's hear it from our members. Taz, is there anything you would like to ask us? You can type it out or you can just um, uh, uh, shoot me a question right now through video or audio. I, about, uh, yeah. uh, we do not have the member who asked us this question, but uh, a few members have asked us a bunch of questions on uh, type form, on the form we sent out before the call. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we and, uh, them. let's go through them, uh, Yeah, so let's go through them. Uh, so Arjun asks from Chennai that, uh, A, he wants to know, uh, is IFF doing any workshops or meetups? Actually, this is quite a common question. A lot of uh, members have asked us if we are doing meetups and uh, workshops. And uh, yes, so that, that's what they're interested in. And that's what they find as a, that's what they're looking forward to. Okay. So uh, I think, uh, and, I, and I think, Rishabh, about six members sent in a similar query, right? On are you yep. doing a, a meetup or a workshop? Um, and I think there's a, this also reflects the need for uh, a, a much closer human connection between what is IFF, what are the members, and for them to get greater value out of uh, these kind of uh, convenings which can be done. So we did do one meetup um, in Bangalore um, when I visited it, and this was organized by Karthik, who is a board member in Bangalore, along with uh, Rachita. And uh, both of them were uh, uh, kind enough uh, with me uh, to uh, have about 80 people join in. This was not a members exclusive meetup. It was a meet and greet for Bangalore community. And uh, we um, had a great time at the Humming Tree Cafe and uh, talked about how IFF would build out. This was fairly early on in this year. And uh, there was a, there was a, there was an excellent energy in the room also, and a lot of questions came our way which helped us think through a lot of the work we've implemented. So I think there there is a definite value in meetups. Uh, the thing is that to start out, um, I think we can plan one more meetup in Bangalore in the next few uh, in the next few um, uh, weeks, and we may have one in Delhi as well, which we, we may plan out in partnership with others. Uh, and if any members have uh, suggestions on venues, because I think a core thing has been that uh, what we've seen in the digital rights policy space has been much more panel type of conversations rather than meetups and mixers is that um, uh, they tend to be very formal. So uh, the thing is that it's just uh, the organization or the expert talking to and sharing a lot of information, but it's not about community. It's not about a much more equal conversation. So we hope to promote that through these kind of events. So we are looking at non-traditional convening spaces, which go beyond, let's say the India international center, but um, to start out, we may do it then uh, our meetups there as well. 
and uh, if there are any suggestions on venues spaces and if members specifically want to offer a space or say that hey this is a great local bar that also hosts these kind of meetups and uh, we'll be happy to take this up we'll be happy to organize one um, as much as we would like to do them more often in different cities and our members are also and we know this because they have shared this information with us are located in cities such as chennai and hyderabad in chandigarh um, in, uh, and delhi is there as well um, we'll be happy to organize some of them there uh, we would like to also structure them in a way where it's um, uh, much more uh, enjoyable and uh, it leads to the right kind of conversation so yes we are looking at meetups they may be there in different kinds of formats we are exploring opportunities if we can do them with um, some uh, entertainers and people or uh, people from our legal community uh, some people who are experts in their areas in which you can just informally catch up with them have a conversation about uh, what's happening in parliament on the supreme court and uh, go beyond reddit and twitter actually to put a face to um, a lot of these kind of conversations which are happening online so yeah uh, meetups is on top of our mind that's the top feedback we have got right and another question that we have from members is uh, because they are in different states so they want to know about the work that the iff is doing on state surveillance and especially cctv is in uh, cities like chennai and uh, bangalore okay so um uh, uh, devdatta uh, probably you can talk a little about uh, how um, you are handling this from the perspective of uh, the uh, cctv case uh, which may develop in delhi where we are looking at it as a test case and uh, there are certain complications there but also um, how we have taken steps towards filing rtis in some other city so uh, i'll just give this to devdatta or joan because they are basically leading on this RTI is with state governments of all states and union territories as well, asking them if they have a standard operating procedure governing surveillance. Now, a similar standard operating procedure was disclosed by the Ministry of Home Affairs at the central level in our petition before the Supreme Court seeking surveillance reform. We've already received some responses. For instance, the state of Bihar has agreed to disclose its standard operating procedure. however other states have rejected our rti application citing confidentiality and various exemptions under the rti act and we will explore whether we want to file appeals against this etc many states have also revealed that they while they don't have standard operating procedures of their own they are following the central government standard operating procedure so the rti have definitely revealed a lot of useful information um on the cctv front as many members may be aware we had sent a legal notice to the delhi government on the 6th of june and the legal notice talked about various things like absence of any kind of statutory framework for installation of the cctv lack of purpose limitation lack of procedural safeguards etc and the fact that there had been no feasibility study or any cost benefit analysis before implementing such a large scale project which is going to cost well over 500 crores so on this we are considering uh, going to court and litigating there is already a pil which is pending before the delhi high court about cctv installations in school but if we were to file a pil it would be much broader it would also talk about cctv installation in for instance private residential colonies public roads etc so i think a core uh, concern which has come through is um, is that uh, what's iff's uh, what's iff's engagement beyond delhi on cctvs and how it may like to do that in future 
So we are quite clear uh, in our long-term approach and strategy that we are a pan-Indian organization. We would ideally like to make these interventions in other states as well. As David Atta just said, we have taken the first steps towards that, which is we have filed RTIs to gather more information on how these CCTV projects are being implemented specifically in certain metropolitan cities. And um, we urge our members and larger community also to share this information with us. Uh, we will only approach court as well as uh, go forward with our interventions when we actually think it has a chance and a real chance of the positive impact through that intervention being caused. This is also an issue of capacity and resources, but we will do this courageously. We are committing to this. It's an issue of time and picking battles and what comes first and what comes second. And of course, in our strategy, Delhi should not always come first. We do recognize that. Towards this, I would just like to indicate, for instance, we've just opened an engagement um, in Madras with uh, the uh, approaching the Madras High Court uh, in the Aadhaar social media linking matter. So uh, we, we are developing this capacity. We know it is a concern to our members and we hope to do much more uh, in future. Rishabh, is there uh, any other specific query on program? Uh, yes, there is. So, uh, uh, Hang on, sorry. I think if you unmute now, it should work. Yeah. So, uh, uh, a member, uh, Hashfire, wants to know whether uh, what what are the tech-based anti-surveillance efforts that are possible. Uh, I'll just leave that to you, Apar. I, I, I presume that he means what are the uh, steps that firms or uh, or, or technical, technological steps we can take to uh, reduce surveillance uh, rather than the legal or the policy mechanisms? Yeah, uh, Raman, will you be able to take that one up? I think you're the best person to speak on that. Sorry, can you ask, repeat the question? Raman, uh, Hashfire wants to know what are the tech-based anti-surveillance efforts that can be undertaken I am. My apologies. That's a slightly broad question. So, was do you know if Techpire was asking about for herself or himself as an individual, or about tech-based responses to surveillance more broadly? Yeah, the question isn't isn't very clear. Or uh, uh, that's the. I think I think we can just touch on both of both the aspects a little bit. Great. I'll, I just try and do sixty seconds. I'm not going to go too much into detail in that. I'm happy, of course, to chat with Techpire later if you if you would like me to. Um, and I just wanted to like give Taz the opportunity if he wanted to he, he she or he wanted to suggest anything to us on on tech based solutions to surveillance. There's stuff that you can do to more secure yourself and to protect yourself from. Means to be able to con to control and and to to be able to mask your traffic from your ISP beyond. You know, very basic information. There, there are a range of self, self such tools. I recommend people look at existing guides on these topics that are available. And the Electronic Frontier Foundation in the United States runs an excellent guide called Surveillance Self Defense (SSD) that you can just search for. So just search on any search engine of your choice on Electronic Frontier Foundation Surveillance Self Defense, and you will find a great set of resources that you can leverage. It's a couple of Indian groups who also do digital security training particularly for activists or other groups as well. And my own uh, the organization that I work for full-time, Access Now runs a digital security helpline for journalists, activists, and others to help guide them in what they can do. I'd give the slightly quibbly point that the security depends on what you do. So there's no one set of uniform you know, tools or tips to follow when it comes to worrying about surveillance. There are different things you can use depending on who you might be afraid is surveilling you either illegally or in a way that creeps you out. 
It depends on whether it's government, which government. It depends on which potential bad actor and who are you worried more by. For example, some people I know are more worried about, say, state law enforcement in India or the Indian government spying on them versus, say, other governments. And there's some other people who say, no, I don't trust the U.S. national security agency as well. And hence, I won't trust Google, Google email or, or Google products as well. So that's my broad answer to that one. That's useful. Rishabh, if you have any other, do you have any other interventions you want to run past people? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, that, uh, that's all the questions I received before the call. So I think uh, I'll just hand it over to Apar now. Uh, Rishabh, uh, any organizational questions or we through with this? Uh, uh, I think there was one or two smaller questions. Uh, Questions on org as well, right? A lot of a lot of people. Uh, these are not specific questions, but uh, uh, one person has asked, "What is the long term plan of the organization?" Which I believe you uh, spoke in the very first slide. But apart from that, uh, there are a, a few people who have wanted us to talk about hiring plans and organizational development and how they see IFF in the future. So. Um, what does IFF look for in terms of the uh, in terms of future in terms of uh, a hiring plan? We 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 want to build out the community and the campaign side now. I think we're fairly strong in terms of law and policy. Yeah, we are working all through the week, putting in um, uh, long hours, but we don't mind. This is the work we have signed up for. This is the work we enjoy, and I think what needs strength right now for IFF's program policy, legal work to have the kind of support and buy-in is just uh, for uh, people to uh, uh, hear about it more in a manner which is more rela relatable to them in which they can take greater ownership and which this has been the co-component of IFF's advocacy work. So I think uh, we're going to be hiring and focusing much more towards uh, community uh, much more towards uh, organizational outreach, much more towards membership development and uh, campaigning. And these are the kind of roles we'll be looking for, um, uh, for great, excellent, motivated people for, to add strength to our team. So in case uh, anyone from our larger community fits those skills, um, do watch out for our job board. You'll see some interesting opportunities open up in the next few months. Rishabh, uh, just uh, one final thing. Uh, oh, uh, so, uh, Taz has actually uh, uh, sent a message to us uh, after Raman asked him that, uh, can there be any suggestions? He sent it in the chat box and I'll just read it as well. He said uh, a low-hanging fruit could be just to link to the resources Raman spoke of on the website itself. Raman spoke, uh, spoke about the resources for, um, uh, for uh, using uh, technical measures to protect your privacy, avoid surveillance. And um, according to Taz, reading a second sentence, this should help with accessibility. And we do agree with this. Uh, let's look at certain ways and we'll discuss this in our team that how can we utilize resources which are um, existing externally and make it available to our own community, um, especially our members. So this is something we do take away much more specifically away from this call. Um, uh, Devdatta, Joanne, Raman, Rishabh, um, and our members, if you have anything to add, please do let us know. And uh, this call, which is being recorded, will be made available um, uh, in a week or two on our YouTube channel, which is being set up. These are exciting times for me. Uh, I get to use this word being set up quite often in office and then to see how we improve it. So this is going to be one of the first videos there. And we hope to do these calls every quarter, make them available to our larger community as well as to people to get a much more intimate sense about what it means to build out a digital rights advocacy organization in India. I thank everyone for their time. To all the members who filled in the type form, to all the members who sent in the res responses, as well as joined this call, and uh, who continue supporting our mission. 
who continue giving us money on a recurring basis. Uh, even after this call closes, if there's any suggestion you would like to send us, we remain accessible. My email address is apar at the rate internetfreedom.in and it's similarly there for all our staffers. We are here for you. We are here to listen from you, to learn from you, but also to fight the fight which needs to be fought for you. So thank you everyone. With that, I'll close this call.